All right. And then I got to the dressing room. Toko was sitting alone on the bench with the laptop in front of her. Toko, did you decide to come here? What well, Alter Ego had to say too? What's your problem? I, I already heard it with M Master. <laughs> with, with Master? <sighs> you don't have to keep saying it. Anyway, so what are you doing right now? <laughs> Sh shut up. S stop b b bothering me. How about that? Get, get out of the way! We have to talk to Alter Ego! Well. No, I, I made Master a promise. A, a promise? <laughs> Master told me to wait here so that what, what I'm doing. Huh? What are you, his dog? <laughs> if that's what <laughs> Master wants, I'll do anything he, he asks. You just love being mistreated. <laughs> well, fine. If, if you really want to me gone uh, by all, all means <laughs> hey guys what's going on uh, did, did you did you move yes. sure thing just kneel before me and beg <laughs> first the mega mask is now super sadist uh, well she's essentially our opponent right now i'm not sure i trust her keeping her words even if she did do it as she asked Whatever it is, I really don't want to have to beg her. Come on, Makoto, just do it. But why did I gotta be what me? It's fine. It's not the end of the world if you just beg a little. But it's the same goes for you. No, I would be the end of the world for me. You sound like a kid right now. There's a hero. Hmm. Well, guess we have no choice but to use force. A shot to the face would stand out for. So go for the gut. But she's a girl. Who cares? I've already got a mountain of lawsuits waiting for me. I gotta get out. What's one more? Hey, Afro Thunder. Don't get any bright ideas, okay? You're totally not adorable. So, I'll make sure, let, sure you live when I stab you, but it'll hurt like hell. Uh, um... I am strong against women and children, but not women and children that seem strong. This guy's the worst. Listen, listen, Kyoko, about the picture from before. It's being very thorough about pretending I don't exist. I told you, tell her. Tell her. Um, Soko, seriously, I'm asking you nicely to let us use the laptop. <laughs> Didn't you hear what I said? I told you, kneel and beg. Come on, Makoto, give her the old one two combo. One drop to the knee, two. Blech. Why are you acting like it's not part of this? I was desperate at first. I finally did kneel down in front of her and said, Please, I'm begging you. Will you please let us use the laptop? <laughs> such, such an ultra miraculous feeling of happiness. All pent up anger and master for abusing me is evaporating. <sighs> so, even you realize it's abuse. Hey. That should be enough, right? Hurry and let us talk to Alter Ego. <laughs> okay! Alright. You're really tame! Everyone, come closer! I already told Yakia, but... I was finally able to crack and open all the files that were on the laptop. Sorry I've kept you all waiting. Correct. Just what I thought. I see. Finally, the time has come. Uh, um, um, I'm starting to get kind of nervous. I felt the same way about resting the laptop in my hands. It's starting to shake. Just a second. Move. A single word was like a sharpened blade. When did it move to let me take over? So then. Here we go. Kyoko began typing words up here as fast as I could read them. Can you tell us what you found out? Sure, I analyzed the files and extracted all the useful information I could find. And one particular important fact I discovered was a certain plan that had been put into effect here. 
to isolate the students of Hope Peak Academy and create a communal life for them. That was the stated goal in the plan, but it was meant to be more of a normal school life. The students were intended to live out the rest of their lives here. Th that's... I see. That's exactly the situation we find ourselves in. That's quite unthinkable, isn't it? And what's more, the only one who came up with the plan was none other than the administrators of Hope Peak Academy themselves. What? Wait, hold on. Then the reason we've been in prison here, it wasn't the work of some psycho freak or criminal organization or whatever. It was the school itself. That doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? Just a second. I don't think Alter Ego is finished. Perhaps we should hear the rest. Right. It seems the reason they devised this plan was because of what happened a year ago. It was how they described the event. They said the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. What, what does that? What does that even mean? Yeah, what kind of name is that for something? Hmm. Otherwise known as a tragedy, it was apparent some sort of devastation occurred. Because of that tragedy, wow. Hope Speaking's Academy was forced to discontinue its role as a school and close down. I see. I see. Things are finally starting to make sense. And what this means is one year ago, this thing, this tragedy took place. And whatever it was, it forced Hope Speak to shut down. From there, they decided to use the school as some kind of staging ground. That's right. They planned to s sequester students here, where they would live out the rest of their lives. So, um... But why would Host Peak's minister want to shut everyone out like that? Hey, um, what could this tragic event have possibly been? In a flash, Choco had typed their questions into a computer, and the answer they got was, Sorry, I don't know if the information I got on this computer is gone now. I'm totally useless, I'm sorry. And that's all she said. Then, it's really the end? We get halfway through the answer and that's it? Indeed. It would appear so disappointing. Uh, wait! There's one thing I forgot to mention. A thing that might be important. I believe it has something to do with the mastermind. The mastermind? Kyoko's finger moved the faster than they had so far. Did you figure out the mastermind's identity? Sorry. No, I still don't know, but I did find a clue, I think. It's one leading to Hope Speak's staff, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope Speak headmaster. So the same person, the very same, well, the head mastermind who planned this all out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible that even now, that he's somewhere in the school right now. The headmaster? The headmaster here in your school? No, he died at the beginning of the tale. We saw it. Then, there's gotta be a mastermind, I mean. Monokuma's been calling himself the headmaster, right? Perhaps. Which makes the real headmaster that much more suspicious. Serious. But if we break down the door to his room, we're dead, right? So, what are we supposed to do? Uh, I'll find a way. Huh? huh? I... No matter what it takes, I'll f find the headmaster. Uh, what? No matter the cost. Yoko, what's going on? I... I... I can't explain why. I just know that I have to find him. She has to? Yoko, what's going on with you? When she heard about the headmaster, her reaction was almost violent. So then... We should see if Alter Ego has any more information. That seemed to be her attempt at regaining her composure, and she started typing again. Did you learn anything else? Sorry. I'm sorry, that's everything I found. All the information in the laptop seems to be pretty old, so that's all I can get from here. I'm really sorry. Then it really is all over. Wait, Alter Ego. Seems to have more to say. So, um, um, well, it's kind of a different topic. I was wondering about something. Um, I haven't seen Celeste, Ifumi, or Taka since yesterday. A heavy silence fell across the room. The only sound was a flat, precise click of keys in Kyoko type. And they're all dead. Huh? What? I see. Certainly I knew that was a possibility, but... Okay, then. It really happened? Sorry. Oh, sorry. There's no point in getting depressed over things I can't do anything about. Anyway. Well then, I, I guess that's that. That's it. A simple phrase that held so much meaning. She began typing again. You've done your job. Thank you. I see. I'm done? I guess I am, huh? Okay, then. Then maybe I'll take a little rest. Kinda tired. Goodbye, everyone. See you later. With that, the laptop enters sleep mode. 
I see. So Alter Ego did everything he could. Indeed. We don't have to talk to him at all that much anymore. But, but I kind of feel sorry for him. But I feel sorry, but he's a computer program, right? Well... I know, but still, he did everything he could for us, you know? Hmm. I mean, yeah, he did, but what's about a computer program he decided to do? You wouldn't tell a computer good job every time you shut down, do you? Well, no. But when you talk to Alter Ego, I guess, just, don't you see the way? I know what you meant. It felt the same way. Hey. hey, come on. It's just a program. You can just tell them different between program and friend, right? But you know, there's a difference between us and that program, man, really. Huh? I started thinking about how you could differentiate a person and an AI. Ultra Ego isn't human, but that that's just the program running our computer. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think of him as our friend. That's right. Yeah, he's no different from us. He's still our friend. Hmm. You think maybe I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> and there's no problem coming in our friend, after all. The more friends, the merrier, right? How about that? Check out. Friendship has no survival value instead. It takes value to survive. So... So, anyways... D don't so anyways that. I'm totally smart and cool thing. I quoted... I, I don't remember where. Hey. Anyways, there's nothing more Alter Ego can do to help us anyways. As such, his role in this is over. Am I wrong about that? No, but... Just a second. And frankly, I question the ease in which you decide who and is and isn't your friend. D do, do you really mean that? This story hasn't gotten off track. We should go over what Alter Ego said one more time. Um... Yeah, good idea. What was those big staff thinking? What? Why are they making us kill each other? <laughs> Alter Ego said that happened one year ago. That started everything. Oh. Yeah, he did say it's the biggest, most awful, most hopeless event in human history, right? That had been the huge incident, whatever it was. But did something that really happen a year ago? Um... I don't remember anything happening that you could describe that way. What about you guys? <laughs> I don't really watch the news, so... I'm sorry. Sorry, nothing comes to mind. Anyway. That event leads closing host peak. Is nothing else, it must have been some kind of connection to school. Maybe all the students here were killed or something. However, that kind of catastrophe would have been all over the news. At least one of us would have remembered that. Then maybe they covered it up. They would explain why none of us knew that the school had been shut down before. Totally covering something like that up. I suppose that's totally not impossible. What's wrong with our government? Our taxes pay for their salaries. They should be handling stuff like that. Anyway. Maybe, but right now, there's only one path open to us. So... We have to find the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. We have to find him and make him tell us everything. As long as we get our hands on him, I think... Kyoko? When she said headmaster, I got that feeling again. But even that is a problem not so easily solved. Yeah, you're right. So then. Well, our business is done here, so for now we should get back. Uh, um... Oh, yeah, good idea. Yeah. Then I. Uh. Huh? Is it really that dusty? I mean. Oh, wait, I mean. No, oh, no, no, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not farting it, Yaki. I'm just gonna be so mad at me. Let's avoid getting involved any further. Um, good call. But as we left the dressing room, someone was there waiting for us. My heart is pounding. Pound, pound, pounding away! It's pounding with anger! <laughs> You're still mad about the whole breaking into the headmaster's room thing, are you? No! That little matter doesn't even matter a little! When I'm a little jealous is you guys enjoying a little indecent mixing bat, but that doesn't matter either. It's building! I feel like it's building! My head is about to boil over with rage! Please! Don't get so angry here! Let me help center your chakra! Tish! This is in the walls of your brains, okay? When you do something to me, I do it right back! An eye for an eye, a fang for a fang! for a fang. Be careful! He's just chanting an incantation of devastation! No, it's just a saying. Hmm. Oh, I see. But what's he talking about? 
Uh oh. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't, Don't let the bed bugs fight. Correct. Yeah. So it's night time. Hey. That doesn't. What does everyone want to do? Celeste was the one who suggested our nighttime rule, but she's gone now. Hmm. I think we should still avoid do being you like out apples or bananas better. Um. Banana. Apple. Uh, depends. Oh. I will eat a good banana any day of the week, but an apple is too sweet unless you got that sweet tooth rolling in. Alright, I think we should still avoid being nighttime. I know it'll make you feel a little better that way. I agree. It's true. Very well then. In that case, time for bed. So everyone head back to the rooms. Monokum was farting words left you were feeling anxious the rest of the night. Oof. Especially with Kyoko being mad at me. Once I was back in my room, I got lost in thought. What we learned from Alter Ego kept on spinning around and around in my mind. That administrators of Hulk's Peak had planned all this. They did. It was the tragedy which had happened a year before. And apparently the headmaster was the one behind it. All the head my, my mastermind. All the mysteries make me worried. But I, I still have to try and unravel them bit by bit. I'm sure the road will be long and tough, but I don't have any other choice. Let's talk a little bit about where I was before I came, became a bear. At first, I was a total loss. I just had no idea what I should become. A lady in our tech support department suggested I try to become a shrimp. She was like, oh, this company's been trying to push for uh, for it forever. It's really incredible offer. But she said laid out the details. It turned out it wasn't a tiger prawn like I was hoping. But a little popcorn shrimp! That's totally tiny! I wouldn't have been the world's smallest mascot! I like eating shrimp, I didn't want to become one myself! Plus, something might come along and step on me! So, then the lady totally started laughing at me! She was like, you think you could do a tiger pawn on your budget? So ultimately, I decided to become a bear instead! And that's the secret origin story of Monokuma! I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that is the origin of Monokuma. Uh, 